Have you ever felt like you were different, like you were special, like you were more sensitive than other people? Have you ever felt like you were meant to do something great? But have you also felt the rush of disappointment? Have you ever felt like you were never able to live up to your true potential? Today, we tell the story of Ganymede. Ganymede was that kid. He was that person. He was that person full of potential, full of empathy, and full of intelligence. He was the person everyone thought was going to become president one day. He was the person always praised, the person always raised to the skies. Ganymede was a gifted child, and he was an empathetic child. All the same, he was capable of walking both in fire and in ice. That meant he had the capability, the power to care deeply for humanity, while at the same time manifesting logic and intelligence in problem solving. He saw people's issues and he saw the truth behind people's words. He listened more intently to what people said. He read between the lines. He saw the face that people put forward and what was inside. He saw the surface and he saw the depth. To be both intelligent and to be both empathetic at the same time is to walk in both fire and ice. And it's a challenge and it's a struggle. And many of these people can end up becoming burned out. If this story speaks to you, click the subscribe button and enjoy the rest of the story. Ganymede, he was this person that everyone praised, the person all adults looked up to, the kid everyone wanted. He was the responsible child, the young adult. He was the person who took care of all the other kids. He was the person that made sure that rules were met. He was the person that showed intelligence and responsibility from a young age. And so every parent liked Ganymede. Everyone wanted to use his powers. Everyone wanted to rely on and depend on him. Ganymede was not parented like other kids were. He was not scolded. He was not told off. He was not told no. He set his own rules. He set his own boundaries. He raised himself. Parents learned to prioritize other children. Teachers learned to prioritize the needs of other kids. Ganymede was always put in the side. He was always set to the corner of the room. His responsibility was to make sure that all the other kids were all right. He was the student helper, the teacher's helper, the parent's helper, the person that had to make sure that everyone else grew up okay, that everyone else's needs were met. Ganymede was constantly in this story told that his needs were not important. Yeah, other kids came first. He had a gift and so he had a responsibility, a responsibility to care for and support other people. And because Ganymede was a humanitarian, he did so with love and compassion. He wanted everyone else to be happy, he wanted everyone else to feel cared for. Ganymede did his best to support everyone around him. His parents and everyone around him relied on him. He was the counselor of all his friends and of his family. He was the emotional support animal. He was the intellectual companion, the mentor and the guide. Ganymede was the person people could confide in, the person people could talk to, but he was also a person looked at with jealousy. Yes, it came to be that other children grew resentful of Ganymede. They looked at him annoyed or frustrated. Why is he given special privilege? Why is he given freedom? Why is he given choices and options? Why is Ganymede always okay and praised while I am scolded and left behind? Yeah, other kids found it hard to deal with the fact that Ganymede was constantly ahead. How is everything so easy for him when it's so difficult for me? How can he already have completed his assignment when I'm still struggling on the first page? It became then that teachers and parents started to think differently about Ganymede. They started to see him, instead of a person of promise, as a problem. They saw how he demoralized other children. They saw how his talents and how his abilities 
became a difficulty, a problem for them as well as for other kids. Ganymede completed his schoolwork before everyone else and then he sat staring into the blank sky. He came and started asking questions, he started challenging the teachers, he became a problem child. Ganymede, he just wanted to learn, he just wanted to be stimulated, he just wanted to be challenged. He too was a kid wanting to be raised, he too was a person in need of support and help. But the kind of help that he needed was a help that he could not receive from the outer world. The support and advice of other parents or of teachers was not sufficient. He didn't relate to the answers or explanations that they give. He didn't connect to or feel a relationship to the things that they told him. The lessons that they told him felt not applied for him, but for others. Ganymede, he started struggling in school. And he showed this in the most peculiar of ways. Ganymede knew that uh, he couldn't strike himself out too fast. He couldn't complete his assignments early. He couldn't score a perfect A on every assignment. To do so would be to overperform, and to do so was to attract the negativity and annoyance of other children and of his parents and teachers. So he learned to keep his grades somewhere around the average, just a little bit above, or just in the middle. He learned to blend in. Ganymede became a shapeshifter. He became a person that appeared as a normal kid. He became a person that appeared as if he was completely normal and as if he was progressing at the same pace as everyone else, despite the fact that he wasn't. He started escaping to his own inner world. He found the solace of his private room where he could read or think far more appealing than the confining space of the classroom. The classroom, school, society began to be regarded as a prison, a place where he could no longer be himself. Friends were sought after only to appease his parents and his teachers. He did his best to act normal and to fit in. He did his best to help out and to be a support to others. But he never felt like he belonged. Ganymede, Ganymede began to feel like he was an outsider, like there was something wrong with him. Like he was different somehow, but he couldn't explain why. He never thought to himself that he was intelligent. He never thought to himself that he was bright. He never allowed himself to consider that he might be of a superior intelligence to others. He never allowed himself to think anything high about himself. Why? I think because he didn't want to intimidate others. He didn't want other people to feel less than him. He didn't want other people to feel like they were worse. He wanted everyone to be regarded as an equal. But that meant he had to compromise himself. He couldn't... He didn't know how to process or explore his differences from the world. He didn't know how to talk about the fact that he felt different or the fact that he felt like an outsider. To the outer world, he didn't look different anymore. He didn't look exceptional anymore. He looked like a normal kid. He was able to play the game. He was able to blend in. So everyone was happy. His teachers were happy. His parents were happy. Everyone was fine with him and everything he did. As long as he did what he needed to do, that was enough. As long as he fit in, that was the most important thing. As long as he had friends, that was fine. That was enough. Ganymede, he started retreating into his own world. He spent more time in the library than anywhere else. He spent more time reading. He started getting lost in a world of his own imagination. His way of experiencing the world was different to how other people experience things. When he talked about his experiences, he did so with passion and a sense of awe. He felt so conscious, so present in every situation. He felt so passionate, so emboldened by the things that he read. Everything he read became real to him. Everything he saw became important to him. He felt emotions, the emotions of other people and the emotions inside more deeply. He felt everything, including the sensation of rain or the sound of music more intently than most. So these things became an escape for him. 
these things became things that he retreated into, things that made him feel like there were other people out there in the world that spoke his language. Despite his best efforts to fit in and to be a part of society, he did start to harbor a form of delusion of grandeur. He started feeling like, or hoping for, a day when he could truly express himself, a day where he could put his gifts into the world, a day when he could show the world what he was capable of. He started writing, he started developing ideas, he started thinking about what his purpose was, and he started pouring himself into these activities. He did so with intensity and great enthusiasm and great love. The quests that he took on were big quests, difficult ones, far above his skill level. He challenged himself, he pushed himself, he did his best to keep himself on his feet. He just wanted to prove himself to the world, he just wanted to show the world what he was capable of, he just wanted to be accepted for his gifts. It came a day then that Ganymede had to go into society as an individual, he had to leave the bird's nest. He had to be his own person, he had to get his own job, he had to start to live for himself. Ganymede found this a difficult transition. When Ganymede came into his first workplace, he did so with aspirations, with promise, with passion. He wanted to get promoted, he wanted to prove to the world that he was capable of. But his managers saw threats. His manager saw somebody that could adventure or endanger their status and their position. They saw a person, a joker, a wildcard, somebody that could threaten the balance of the workplace. His ideas became regarded with suspicion. His solutions became problematic. He was a rebel. He was a misfit. He was an unpredictable force. They could not read or control him. They could not tell him what to do. They could not force or instill their order or organization on him. So they started sabotaging him. Every little thing he did became seen as an inconvenience. Every idea he had became seen as a problem. Everything he did was perhaps good, but executed incorrectly. He needed to follow the chain of command. He needed to slowly patiently work through the hierarchy. He was not allowed a place to shine or to express what was on his mind. Ganymede began to question himself. Am I a bad person? Do people just not like me? What is wrong with me? Why is it that people don't accept me? I can see that my ideas could make things better here. I can see that I have potential and I can see that there are things I could do here, but Whenever I try to do something, things just end up becoming worse. People become upset with me, despite for the fact that I just have ideas, despite the fact that I'm just trying to offer solutions. When I try to help, it is seen as a problem. When I try to offer my advice, it is rejected. Am I not welcome here? Is this not the place for me? However, Ganymede had this insane amount of resilience and passion. He wanted to prove himself and so he only stepped up his efforts, he pushed harder, he fought more, he did his best to fit in, he did his best to follow chain of command, he tried to do what they told him and he tried still even more and more persistently to bring about his ideas. He started whispering his ideas rather than shouting them, he started offering them to the, his supervisors. He started letting his supervisors realize his ideas. And this pleased the supervisors. The supervisors were happy with this. Yeah, here came free ideas, free solutions that they could ride on, that they could use to prove themselves to their superiors. Yeah, the supervisors were very happy with this. And they started relying on his strength. They started relying on his potential. They started seeing his ideas as a possibility. He became a resource a silent, hidden resource. So the supervisors did their best to hide him from others. They did their best to hold him to themselves. He became the wine boy, the person that poured the wine, the person that pleased and supported the environment. Because this was less threatening. Just as in school, when he was taught to teach and train the other children, 
he was taught in workplaces to support his environment and his co-workers and his superiors. Instead of becoming a candidate for promotion, he became a backbone of the company. Everyone came to depend on him for his ideas and solutions. More and more people came to see his promise. He felt like his time was coming. He felt like his potential was finally starting to manifest itself. Finally, perhaps there was a chance at a promotion or at coming up higher. He felt there was more he could do. He felt there was more that he was capable of. He felt these ideas were just the beginning. But his superiors thought otherwise. His superiors thought he was a threat. His superiors were still not trusting of his ideas or potential. His superiors still looked at him with suspicion while his co-workers looked at him with envy. Yeah, his role became that of a silent ghost, a silent supporter, and his... Can you imagine how tough that must be to grow up to be only a servant, to be only a supporter, to be valued only for your gifts but not for who you are, to be regarded only by the promise of your ideas but not of the promise of yourself as a person, to be rejected as an individual but to only be accepted to the point that you can be useful to other people, to be regarded with distrust or with jealousy or envy. Ganymede became resentful. He became resentful of the people around him, of his superiors. He felt sidelined, he felt held back, he felt they were lying to or manipulating him. He began to feel like he was mistreated, he felt like his life was unfair. He felt like he had been used by other people. Beyond that, Ganymede became to feel empty. He was so full of creativity and promise. But after a while, that creativity and promise had sucked him dry. His gifts had been used up, his potential, his ideas had been absorbed by the tribe and by his superiors. The people around him had used up every last drip of his passion and joy and enthusiasm. And now Ganymede was but an empty shell, tired, exhausted, burnt out. Ganymede felt there was something wrong with him. Why couldn't he find any ideas anymore? Why couldn't he be more creative? Why couldn't he be as passionate as he used to be? Why did that star that used to shine so bright suddenly fade into a black crust? Why had he lost himself? The most beautiful thing about Ganymede is that he ended up becoming what we know today as the modern Aquarius. Yeah, Ganymede was the water bearer, and Ganymede was a traditional Greek myth. The original story of Ganymede featured a young boy carried to the heavens by Zeus, and a young boy to a, who was used as a pool boy. Ganymede uh, was a myth and a legend and a retelling of how people of potential and promise can become exploited by their environment. Ganymede is a warning, and a story about how you need to rely on how you need to think about your gift. Ganymede is the story of what happens when you are both intelligent and empathetic. Ganymede shows us that we don't need to become cold or hardened, neither do we need to be naive in our passion or enthusiasm. We need to learn how to express our gifts and how to set boundaries. There is nothing wrong with showing compassion or care for other people. There is nothing wrong with being gifted. There is nothing wrong with being different. There is nothing you need to prove to the world. There is nothing you need to do for other people to blend in. You need to learn how to be yourself and how to trust in yourself. And you need to find people that see you for who you are and accept you. You need to recognize that you are not an infinite well of energy. You need to recognize that you need things that fill you up and recharge you. You are not only for other people, but you also need other people. That means you need to recognize the things that give you joy and the things that give you passion and the things that give you energy. 
you need to recognize the things that make you feel calm, the things that make you feel relaxed, the things that make you feel at peace. You need to recognize that people might try to exploit you and that people might be jealous of you and that people might be resentful of you. And you might have to recognize how you deal with and engage with those things. There is a difference between appeasing other people and acknowledging them. Acknowledge that other people feel this way. Acknowledge that other people struggle with this. Acknowledge that this is difficult for others. But do not change yourself. Do not compromise yourself. Do not try too hard to fit in. Recognize how heavy it is to wear an armor that isn't your own. Recognize how difficult it is to have a mask over your face. Yeah. Ganymede suffered, but eventually he was seen. Eventually he was given a space in the world. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.